Hearts team is the best team, the greatest team, the team that lasts forever. There's only one way on, you've got to trust God's son, then you'll be on the team forever. Hey kids, welcome back to week five of our Olympic term at Waves. I'm going to start today by adding a man straight away to our mural. Let's have a look at him. As you can see, he's all tangled up. And in the race of life, people on Jesus' team have to be wary of something that can tangle them up and hold them back. What do you think that might be? It's actually written on our mural. If you have a look, it says, let's throw off sin that tangles us. That's right, it's sin in the race of life with Jesus that can tangle us up and throw us off the right track. What do you actually think sin is? I'll keep it really simple. Sin is the bad things that we do and the good things that we fail not to do. So it's the bad things that we actually do and the good things that we fail not to do. I'm going to throw to some of our leaders and see if they can actually list off some sins for us. So the people on Jesus' team have actually turned their backs on sin. They've asked God for forgiveness and they're really, really trying to live life the way Jesus and God want them to. But it's not always easy. Sometimes sin can be really, really attractive and tempting to us. Let's hear the story of some people from Ephesus who really wanted to put their sinful ways right behind them and live a life with Jesus afresh. But before we do that, I'm going to add them to my mural as well. So we've met the people of Ephesus and they've seen this huge, massive bonfire happening. And so they've ventured on over and they've come across some people who are throwing things into the fire and they're creating that bonfire. What was the sin that these people actually wanted to rid from their lives? Can you remember? Have a think. That's right, they spoke about witchcraft and all the things associated with witchcraft that they wanted to get rid of. They spoke about their magic books and their crystals and they were getting rid of all of them. Do you think that would have been an easy thing for them to do? Probably not. Giving up their job, 
paying their bills. It's never an easy thing to do. And their job was in witchcraft. Nora is actually admitting to everyone that, you know, your way of living life, following all these witchcraft rules and spells and charms and crystals, was actually wrong. And there was a better way to be living life. Let's flip back over and see what else the people in Ephesus are getting up to. Oh, quick! We need to get the hose! <gasps> Call the fire brigade! Oh, no, oh, no. Let's do a rain dance. No, they're our books. We want to burn them. What? Why? They were so much money! Why? Give them to us! We'll sell them! Yes! No, Jesus said that we shouldn't have anything to do with witchcraft. So there we've seen that the followers of Jesus are getting rid of all their magic books. They've decided that they're their books and they can do what they want with them. They don't want to sell them. They don't want to give them to the other people in Ephesus to sell. They actually want to get rid of them and not have anything to do with witchcraft at all because that's what God says. Even though the other people in Ephesus are concerned and they're worried and they're saying, but that's how you make your money. How are you going to live now? The followers of Jesus aren't worried. They're not ashamed of God. They know that God will look after them, that he won't let them starve, and that he'll actually meet all their needs because he is the son of the one and only true God. They were prepared to burn billions and billions and thousands of dollars worth of material of all their books. They didn't want to gain any profit from them. They just wanted to burn them and live a life according to God. The teacher Paul showed them that practicing witchcraft was sinful, that God hated it, so they were going to hate it too. The other people in Ephesus couldn't understand why you couldn't do both. They kept asking, can't you worship this Jesus fellow and practice witchcraft? Is it sinful to actually be doing both? And the followers of Jesus said, no. Jesus and sin don't actually go together. You can't do both. You have to choose one or the other. Witchcraft is a sin. And they actually were choosing Jesus. Because he had the words of eternal life for them. He had the crown that lasts forever. The people in Ephesus said, our gods are going to be angry about this. How are you going to do this? But the followers of Jesus had an answer for that as well. They said, the gods of this town belong to the devil. They actually have no power over Jesus. You've seen the power of Jesus at work in his servant Paul. They talked about clothing that people touched and were miraculously healed. They talked about evil spirits being ordered to leave people in the name of Jesus. And that the spirits actually obeyed. Jesus is really the true son of the true God. He came to earth so that we could become friends with Jesus. The people in Ephesus still couldn't really believe this. They were standing here watching the followers of Jesus burn thousands of dollars worth of books. And they couldn't really understand. But the followers of Jesus were strong. They knew what they wanted. And they decided that they actually wanted to follow Jesus from now on. So kids, it's never easy to actually say no to sin. Like the followers of Jesus in Ephesus, where they had to say no to witchcraft and choose to follow Jesus. It's never easy for us either. But Jesus actually knows that. And it's very important to him that his people actually try. Jesus has actually promised to help us out. Uh, he's given us the Holy Spirit and he's given us his word in the Bible to provide us with all the guidance and training we need to turn our back on sin. Those believers in Ephesus were right to follow Jesus and obey him. They were right to trust him and to look to him for guidance. And he would look after them. And what those people in Ephesus would say now is the joy of living in heaven with Jesus, of getting that crown that lasts forever, is worth far, far more than $4 million, like their books that they were throwing in the fire. See you next week on Zoom, guys.